Hello everyone, this is Andre Bodmer doing a SARS e-filing tutorial. This is a comprehensive tutorial on how to use SARS e-filing. But before we get into that, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this and click the notification button so you don't miss any upload. The easiest way or one of the easiest ways to get to SARS e-filing is you can go to sars.gov.za and then on the top right and uh, on the top middle, you can just click on login. It will take you straight to the SARS login page. And here I'm just quickly going to log in. Okay, so this is the landing page of your e-filing profile. If this is your first time logging in, it will look slightly differently. But if you've logged in in the past, this is normally what it will look like. So on the top left hand side, you will see that your taxpayer details is on the left hand side, your full name, tax reference number, ID number. To the right of that, you've got the portf whose portfolio you're working on and then which taxpayer you're currently working on. Next to that is what type of e-filing profile are you using? Individual, it will also show corporation if it's a corporation portfolio or it will show tax practitioner if it's a tax practitioner uh, profile. So under your taxpayer details um, on the top left hand side you've got this my profile button. The only one that's really important here is profile and preference setup and this is where you can update your security contact details. This is generally the details that SARS would use, would use to contact you um, f regarding your e-filing and also you can update your login details, your password, setup uh, two-factor authentication or a passwordless login. If you've got more than one portfolio setup, you can go to portfolio management and this is where you can do that or set that up. So you can just add a portfolio if you are working on more than one e-filing portfolio. So on the right hand side, you've got these nice shortcuts here. The first one is online booking. You can use this to actually book an appointment with SARS. And normally this would be a phone call or a video call due to the lockdown situation that we've got going on. Then the, the shortcut next to that is a statement of account. It is basically the same thing if you go to returns, source correspondence, request historic notices, and then request statement of account. So it's the same thing, it's just less clicks to do. So if you click that, you can also request your tax statement of account by doing that. Next to that, you've got my tax compliance status, which is the TCS profile, which I'll show you later. You can also find it under tax status, uh, tax status dropdown. Then SARS register details, that is the RAVA1, which is under SARS register details on the left, and then maintain SARS register details. And then finally, we've got notice of registration, which is basically a confirmation from SARS on SARS's letterhead with your income tax number and your details that you've registered yourself for income tax on. Okay, and that is it for the shortcuts on the right hand side. Next to, next to the profile details, you've got the sandwich icon here. If you click it, it opens, it actually closes the menu on the left hand side. If you click it again, it brings back the menu. And so on your right top right hand side, you've got all the specific functions of e-filing of what you can do on e-filing. And when you click one of them, it will actually change this menu on the left hand side. So if I click on services, there's a services menu on the left. If I click on tax status, there's a tax status menu on the left. If you click on contact, there's the contact info on the left. If I click back to home, it will send you to this page. And now that we are at home, the first thing is when you click on user, this is where you can actually change your specific personal details of SARS. Normally you can leave this completely alone. Banking details, here you can set up your own banking details if you want to pay SARS from your e-filing portfolio rather than making an EFT if you need to pay SARS. 
underneath that is tax stops at tax stops this is where you can activate or deactivate your tax type with SARS and it should show successfully activated for you to be able to do your individual tax return just an important note if admin penalty is deactivated you will not be able to do your income tax IT admin penalty and individual income tax must be ticked and both must be successfully activated for you to be able to do your tax if you're a provisional taxpayer obviously you have to tick the box you have to type in your tax reference number and click register and then you should be able to file your IRPS 6 as well below that transfer request this is where if if a tax practitioner is requesting your profile from you that is where you can check whether there's a request lying there so that you can approve it from this page. Underneath that is summary. And basically it's just a declaration for you to file your own e-filing or it's a page that you can sign and give to your tax practitioner if they are doing your taxes for you so that you can get here at summary. Change website portfolio. You can use this to change your type of e-filing profile or e-filing personality from an individual to either an organization or a tax practitioner. Whatever applies to you, you click submit and it will change the, the e-filing profile for you. But most individuals will not use this function. Then change your own password. You can use this to change your password, obviously, like I said, but also you can update your security questions and answers. So you no longer have to phone source for this. You can actually just come directly to your e-file portfolio, come to change your own password, and there's all the security questions. And then at pending registration, if you if you if you need to activate your your tax profile and it doesn't go through immediately, it says six, um, it says registration pending or something like that, then you can check is SARS requesting any supporting documents. And then you can check that here under pending registration. Then underneath that is SARS registered details. At SARS registered details, you can click here on notice, notice of registration. And this allows you to request an IT150 form, which basically is a written copy. So if I request it, it will actually show a notice of registration in writing in SARS's letterhead that if somebody asks for it, you've got it on hand. So that is quite useful to have. Okay. Maintain SARS registered details. This is where you can actually change your back office information with SARS. You can also update your banking details. You can update your, your addresses, your cell phone numbers. If you've clicked save, on the Rava one, it will show a record here that you've saved it and this is your details and it was saved on this date. Maintain register details. This So instead of checking, instead of when you click save, you've clicked file on the Rava one, it will show here. This is where it will show the details there. Merge, enti merge entities is not a function that um, I use often or any, mo many individuals would use. So you can just skip this one. Then under letters, you can see this function is clear. I've never used this and register withholding tax on, uh, on interest. You can just ignore this. Um, most people don't use this function. Customs registration is not active. You can actually skip this. So the next menu function we are going to look at is returns and this is where you are going to do the bulk of your of your tax work that you want to that you want to do and again on the left hand side under SARS correspondence if you go to search, cor search correspondence and SARS has issued any letters like a um, maybe you've changed your banking details and SARS wants supporting documents for it maybe SARS issued a letter asking for supporting documents, maybe there's a, a, an outcome of your objection, all those type of letters, they will come here, they will, they, will, they will land here. And you can also change the dates 
um, the, the date window. So you've received it from, um, uh, so you've received it from the 20, maybe from the 22nd of April. If you want to extend that date, you can, you can just go all the way back and maybe you want to change the year to say 2016 Jan, and then you pick a date and then you can request, you can do a search for all the letters that was issued between 2016 and to the current date. And you can see this is where all the notices pops up or, or at least all the letters, not notices. Okay, if you're registered for pay as you earn, this is where you will be able to check your pay as you earn um, statement of accounts specifically. If you are naughty and you haven't filed some of your returns and you are required to, SARS can issue uh, SARS can issue you with admin penalties, and this is where you can request a statement of account to see if you have any admin penalties outstanding with SARS. At request historic IT notices, you can use this function to request a notice of assessment for a specific tax year if you want to, but the main function I use this for is to request a statement of account. The statement of account allows you to see whether you have a refund or a payment due to SARS. So if you click next, you can select whether you want it over six months or over a specific period, longer than six months maybe. And so you maybe you select, uh, you can go back, say you want it from March 2017 to see some history. You can just click request and then you click on click here to view your statement of account and it will download and you should be able to open it in PDF. On this page, you will be able to see what returns are not filed yet, but you have to make sure that um, because sometimes you can file a return but accidentally request another one for the same year. So it will also land here. So any returns that you've requested but have not filed will be on this page. And you can, and from this page, you can actually open that and do your your individual tax return. You can open it here, my tax return, and you can start working on it. Okay. Under returns history, personal income tax, this is where all your filed tax returns will be. So you'll be able to see which dates so they were filed, and you can actually open them and view them to see what you've done in the previous tax years. Non-core taxes, again, withholding tax on interest it's, is not a function many people will use, so we'll just skip over that one. Return search, another one, I don't use this function at all. Payments, also, <laughs> um, I normally suggest people just pay directly to SARS using an EFT rather than... Um, I mean, you can also use e-filing to, to, to make a payment and set up your own banking details, but it can be a bit complicated um, unnecessarily. Right. Under request for reason, if, if SARS issued an assessment that you are not happy with, but you first want to request reasons from SARS why this assessment was issued, maybe SARS issued you with an additional assessment, you can request a request for reasons within 30 days on the date which the additional assessment or assessment was issued. And then SARS should or must give you reasons for that assessment. Okay, and that is where you can do it here. If you decide not to request for reasons um, or you want to dispute immediately or you want to dispute after receiving reasons from SARS, you can do it over here under disputes and you can either file a notice of objection, which is the first, the first type of dispute that you can file. You can file a notice of appeal if your objection uh, was maybe disallowed or you can file an RFR and an RFR is a request for remission and that is where you can ask SARS to remit um, penalties and interest. That is what you can do on a disputes function. Voluntary disclosure. This is not a function that is used often. Um, so you can actually just skip that one. Right, moving swiftly along. If you click on services, 
other services here on the left hand side set up here you can set up for interesting things that many people necessarily won't use but this is where you can do it for transfer duty e-stamps advanced tax rulings you can also apply for a directive here under tax directives manual tax directive so if you request one here you can select the type of uh, tax directive that you want so maybe you want to do a application for a fixed uh, percentage is um, this is especially applicable to people who earn commission income they are taxed normally at 25 percent here you can ask SARS for maybe 18 percent or maybe 20 percent for example right underneath that if you've done if you've completed a if you've completed a tax directive and you filed it you can actually see if it's pending, what's happening to it, you can also check your submission. Um, if you've submitted it, what's the outcome for that? And then the history. Okay. Then under additional services, reportable arrangements isn't used very often. Like I said, this, I mean, this is just contact details. Tax clearance certificates have moved to the tax status function next to services on the right hand side. So you can skip this. As you can see here, uh, uh, 15 April 2016 um, so I've changed the system to the TCA system so you can skip this my tax uh, my TP configuration this is for tax practitioners you can just skip this if you want to complain to SARS this is specifically where you can do it you can you can just click next and it will take you through the complaints process and then once you filed your complaint, you'll be able to see your complaints here under complaints history. Um, live help. This is the same button as the help you e-file button. I've never used the help, help you e-file button myself. And the last one to take note of is, oh yes. Right. I've never used the help you e-file myself. I don't know if, if, you know, if you've used uh, the help you e-file function let me know in the comments it would be great to find out if anyone actually uses it right next to that you've got tax status and underneath um, with tax status on the left hand side i mean i've done a tutorial on this link in the description to that video but there yeah you can activate the, your the tax status function so under my my compliance profile you can see whether you are com compliant or not and then tax compliance status request allows you to request a, a good standing if you are 100% compliant. Right, and the last function is contact. And this is literally just SARS's contact detail page. Um, most of SARS's, well, it's just SARS's telephone number. There's no real other uh, details here that SARS gives to contact them. Okay, and that is it. So in summary, very quickly, home allows you to change your specific e-filing details and your details that's registered with SARS. Returns allows you to request maybe older assessments or a statement of account. Returns issued is where you do your tax return. Return Returns history is where all your previous tax returns are shown then we go to request for reasons is if you want to request reasons from SARS for an assessment disputes allows you to dispute to SARS notice of objection notice of appeal services the main function here is tax directives and submitting a complaint and then finally tax status allows you to apply for a tax clearance certificate I hope this video was helpful. So this is the general overview of how to use SARS e-filing for the individual profile. Leave a like, comment or subscribe and hit the notification button to see more videos like this.